The previous discussion is sufficient to calculate NOK for computer analysis. When we do hand calculations, we often want to simplify the problem as much as possible. To do so, we first consider some important constraints. In flexural members, axial compression or extension results in insignificant changes to structural behavior. We can therefore assume members to be axially rigid. If we assume them to be axially rigid, the motion along the axis of the member is constrained. As we see here in the figure, degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2 are linked. If I move degree of freedom 1 to the right and the member is axially rigid, degree of freedom 2 must move to the right as well. The second constraint is a rigid body constraint. In a rigid body constraint, out of the total six degrees of freedom that are available with two nodes, only three are independent. If I move degree of freedom one to the right, that's going to determine degree of freedom four. If I move degree of freedom two up, that's going to determine part of degree of freedom five. If I rotate degree of freedom three, I will rotate degree of freedom 6 and I will move degree of freedom 5. Therefore, by knowing degrees of freedom 1, 2, and 3, I know degrees of freedom 4, 5, and 6. So this reduces our number of degrees of freedom. An axial, an axial constraint reduces it by 1 in general, and a rigid body constraint reduces it by 3 in general. Let's look at some examples. All of these members are axially rigid. Here, in the first example, we have degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2. But because the left end is held still, this horizontal degree of freedom is constrained and cannot move due to the axial rigidity of the member. In example B, degree of freedom 1 is still there. Degree of freedom 2 is still there this particular node right here couldn't move anyway because of the pin support. This node, however, could hypothetically move because of the roller support, but because of the axial rigidity of the member, it is now constrained. So we've reduced the problem from three degrees of freedom to two. In the last problem, we have a rigid body constraint on the left half of the member. The nodal rotations of the end nodes are still active. If I rotate degree of freedom 1, I will move the member vertically, and I will rotate it, and I will move it horizontally. So that node can move in all those directions, but that motion is not independent of the motion in degree of freedom 1. We now move to the last topic and that's reduction of degrees of freedom. We'll see later on how to use this technique. Right now we'll just learn how to count and OK, assuming that we will use it. To reduce the size of hand calculations, we can neglect rotation degrees of freedom for moment-free ends. Now that doesn't mean that we hold that node from rotating. On the contrary, it means that we allow it to rotate and we account for that movement in a different way that we'll see in a later lesson. To count degrees of freedom, we'll go through some examples. In this first example, originally we saw that it had three degrees of freedom. Axial rigidity eliminated the horizontal degree of freedom, and we'll then reduce the rotational degree of freedom at the free end. Now, we'll see later how to deal with this, but the bottom line here is that it reduced a problem that was a three degree of freedom problem to a one degree of freedom problem. Looking at a previous example as well, we have the rotational degree of freedom at the center pin, but the right hand node has is a moment free end, so we can reduce that degree of freedom. The last example is also one that we've looked at before. Now, we can't reduce this degree of freedom 
because that is the independent degree of freedom on the rigid body that relates to these degrees of freedom over here. But the right hand node is an ordinary degree of freedom, so we can reduce that out. We've reduced this problem from an NOK of 2 to an NOK of 1.